Here we go. All right, so recently I got a request to do a video over uh, an oil circuit or oil level controls, but I'm gonna go over this oil circuit. So how I explain to people is oil circuits are just like refrigeration circuits, right? It's a circuit with its own types of issues, with its own troubleshooting, everything. So just like you have to learn the refrigeration circuit, if you're in supermarket refrigeration or anything like that, you have to learn an oil circuit as well. So where I start is right here at the compressor. The compressor is your start and your end, right? So if we look real quick, this is an older compressor. I can tell because we have this oil cooler right here, right? So newer compressors, that oil cooler is actually obsolete, but it doesn't really matter. So on the front of the compressor, we have our oil pump, right? Which is what pumps the oil. Down here on the bottom, on this big nut right here, that's where your pickup tube is. So essentially, this bottom half of the compressor within your crankcase is filled with oil, right? The oil pump is rotating and sucking that oil up, right? So in here, there's a screen that'll get dirty. Over time, you know, people don't brace with nitrogen, um, you do retrofits, all that stuff. This screen will get dirty. And what'll happen is that'll cause your net oil pressure to drop. To clean it, all you do is isolate the compressor, pop this off, take that screen out, clean it. You're gonna end up changing the oil in this compressor and then you put it back in. Right? But anyway, the oil pumps through your oil pump and it's gonna lubricate, you know, the compressor, you're gonna lubricate your crankshaft, your cranks, your pistons, right? And that oil is gonna come up and through your discharge line. Now, before I get there, a couple things that are on the compressor itself. Number one, we have our oil protection. So this is a Centronic 3. This uses a transducer right here, right? It uses that transducer for the Centronic. And once this drops below nine pounds net oil, it starts to time out. That light turns red, it times out for 120 seconds. If it stays under nine pounds, it trips that, that uh, oil protector. You can see right here, green is good, red is bad, no, uh, no light means no power. Okay, additionally, we have our oil float, or just a float, or some people call it a pot. Really, it's called an oil level control, right? Made by Sportland most of the time. Those are the ones that I like are the Sportland ones. I see a lot of the Henry ones, those blue ones. Um, so, you'll notice you have two lines on this. One of them, which is your top one, is your oil fill line, right? So, inside of this, the reason why it's called a float is because there's a ball float inside of this, right? So, there's a ball that you adjust using this nut right here, you can adjust that ball going up and down and adjust your oil level within the pot. Now I can't really see it, I'd have to get a light on there. Typically what you're looking for for oil level for coupling compressors is no less than half side glass. It's a little bit different than Carlisle compressors. Carlisle compressors, they want you at like an eighth or quarter side glass. I don't remember exactly, but um, I primarily work on coupling. I have very few Carlisles. So that's how that's that's how that's done is they want half side glass, right? This other line, this lower line, it's kind of obsolete at this point. We don't really need it, uh, but that's an equalizer line. So that goes to every single compressor. You'll notice every compressor, you'll notice every compressor has those two lines, right? So this is an equalizer line to keep the oil level about the same within each compressor. Okay? But this is our fill line. So when I walk into a motor room, I see this right here. I know that this is a high pressure oil system. Okay, you have two types of oil systems. You have high pressure and low pressure, right? This right here is a separator and receiver in one. Specifically, Hussman calls this a turbo set. Um, I've had one fail on me ever since I've started refrigeration. They are almost bulletproof. They're like 99% uh, bulletproof, right? They're really good oil separators. And you can see on this oil separator, it's also a reservoir. So I don't know if you can see right now, these are my sight glasses, right? I have three sight glasses on this thing and my oil level is currently at that third sight glass. So that's a little high, that's okay. We can see it bouncing in there and that oil 
mean, you can see it looks, I don't know if y'all can see, but it's somewhat clear. It's a little dirty. You can get, it can probably get changed. Um, but so what happens is the oil is going to come up our discharge line, right? You can see our discharge header right here. Our discharge header comes in and it's going to hit a screen that's on the outside of this separator, right? So what is happening is oil is coming in, hitting that screen, and because the oil is heavier than the vapor, it's going to stick to that screen and drop, right? And then your vapor goes up and then goes up into your condenser, your heat reclaim, or whatever craziness you got going on here, okay? But your oil should come down into this, into your reservoir now. So this top side is your separator, right? This top side's your separator, this bottom side's your reservoir. Now, this is a high pressure oil system because the pressure that's in here is your discharge pressure, right? So on the bottom of this, this is your oil line that goes to your compressor. So you see it comes off. We go through an OF303T, which is your oil filter, which is there to filter out the particulates. This is all high pressure, high temperature discharge, right? We come through and then we hit, this is basically a TXB. I think this is a Y123, or I think, um, I think Husband just changed the part number to like a Y825, I think it is. I'd have to look it up to be sure. But think of this as like your oil TXB. What this does is it drops the pressure, it drops the pressure for your oil, okay? And typically you're gonna set it about 25 pounds above your crankcase pressure. So our high pressure oil is gonna come in. You can see it kind of comes in here and then wraps around and goes into our TXP right there. And then it comes out, you follow that line down and then it goes into our, our pots, right? Or our oil floats, our oil level regulators, okay? So this keeps the pressure about 25 pounds above crankcase pressure. The reason why is because just like all of refrigeration, you need that pressure differential in order for anything to move, right? If you don't have a pressure differential, then you're not gonna move anything, whether it be oil, whether it be refrigerant, it doesn't matter. You have to have that pressure differential. So this Y valve or this oil TXV um, creates that pressure differential. So we have high pressure, high temperature discharge oil coming in, right? It goes through this Y valve and then it comes out. It's still hot, but now that pressure is going to be lower. So say my crankcase pressure is 20 pounds, right? I want my oil level or my oil pressure to be about 45 pounds after that Y valve. So before the Y valve here, I'm going to have high pressure. I'm going to have discharge pressure. When I measure it down here, I should have about 20 to 25 pounds. I say 25 pounds over my crankcase pressure, okay? And then you see here, we have our relief valve. So that high pressure gas comes in right here. Anything that's above that 25 or that 45 pounds, is gonna dump into our, back into our suction head, right? So that's basically, think of this as like, a, like an equalizer line, okay? High pressure comes in, we keep the pressure that we need down in here. Anything extra just gets dumped back into our suction line, right? That way we don't have that high pressure uh, going into our crankcase, okay? And like I said, then it starts all over. Your oil goes into your crankcase, goes to your oil pump or your oil float, goes into your crankcase, gets pumped by your oil pump, comes out the discharge into our separator, regulator, through the Y valve, and it's just a circle, right? It's simple. It's just like a refrigeration circuit. You have your main components, and it's just a circuit. It's a circle, it goes and goes. Now, let's talk about some common um, issues that you see with oil circuits. First one being compressor off on oil. So, first things first, if you ever find a compressor off on oil, you ever find a compressor off at all, you don't just start button pushing. You don't see what turns the compressor back on, right? You start checking stuff. I have a compressor off on oil. First thing I wanna do is know why. Okay, it tripped for a reason. These things don't just trip for no reason. If it tripped once, it's gonna trip again. If you just reset it and it runs and you leave, it will trip again, okay? So some common issues, 
First thing I'll do is I'll look at my oil level. I'll see where my oil level's at. If I have a low oil level in my regulator or in my uh, oil level control, I'll immediately come over and look at my separator or my reservoir. What's, and I'll look, okay, what's my oil level in my reservoir? Okay, for this, I can see that my oil level's way up here. So if this compressor is off on oil, I know that it's a compressor issue. It's not gonna be an oil circuit issue. It's gonna be this compressor issue. So I need to look. If I have a low oil level here, first thing I'm gonna start looking at is my oil flow, okay? And see if I can adjust this ball or maybe somebody adjusted it. So if you adjust these too much, you'll actually drop that ball inside there and you'll never feed oil. And, or you'll feed too much oil. So first thing I'll take a look at is this, right? Um, if I'm off on oil, my oil level's good. I know I have enough oil, maybe my screen's dirty. So what I'll typically do at that point is I'll hook up my gauge on my oil pump. And um, if you need to see how to check uh, net oil, I made a video already. It was a video prior to this one that goes over checking your net oil and what you should be looking for, all right? So check that out if you need to find out or you need a little information on how to check net oil. I'm not gonna go over that in this. But I'll hook my gauge up on my oil pump, I'll reset my compressor, and then I'll see what my oil pressure is. Right, if I have low oil pressure, I'm gonna immediately start suspecting this. So a lot of the times you'll waste time talking yourself out of the right thing to do. What I mean by that, if I suspect that screen is dirty, I can spend a lot of time talking myself out of not just cleaning that screen. When in reality, it only takes a couple minutes to isolate the compressor, dump the oil, clean the screen, and um, I'll do a video over, over doing that as well. But it doesn't take very long to, to re remove and clean that screen. So, don't talk yourself out of doing the right thing. You could spend a lot of time talking yourself out of doing the right thing and the, the correct thing, right? So, if my screen is dirty, obviously I'm not gonna have oil flow into my pump, right? Some other things that can fail are this oil separator. I've replaced one of these in my career, right? These are very, very good, but they're not 100%. Eventually, the screen that's in here can get plugged and you'll stop separating oil, right? This oil filter, uh, I try to do them a, on a yearly basis. So I'll make that part of my rack maintenance is I'll come in and I'll clean these oil filters. So just turn this off here, turn this off here, change that oil filter, that'll save you a lot. This is not common, but this can fail as well, right? Just like any other component. So if I'm checking my pressure and I have discharge pressure here and discharge pressure there, I know that this has probably failed. But if that's the case, more than likely, I'm gonna have multiple compressors that are off on oil. Because what's happening is that high pressure discharge is going into my crankcase and it's gonna blow out all my oil. Because we don't want high pressure in our crankcase. We only want you know, lower pressure in our crankcase. If you have high pressure in that crankcase, then you're gonna blow out your oil, okay? Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's not it really. Like I said, the oil circuit is its own beast. You have to become familiar, if you're gonna work in supermarket refrigeration, you have to become familiar with the oil circuit. Um, that's some of the more common things. I don't wanna drag this on too much. Um, if y'all have any questions, comments, you know, comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know any questions. I can do my best to answer them, or I can at the very least point you to a reference that will answer your question. I can guarantee you that. Um, but that's all I got for this one. If you can, like, subscribe. I really appreciate y'all watching. And uh, yeah, later.